gear hacks, playing hacks, miscellaneous hacks, today we got them all. These are the life hacks that every guitarist should know. If you change your string and you don't have anything to cut off the horrible dangly leftover, don't worry, all is not lost. Cause check this out, you give her a spin, it's just gonna pop off. You know how you sound great when you're practicing in your bedroom, but terrible as soon as anyone else is listening? Two big things can cause this that you wanna check. First of all, what are you doing with your breath? Are you holding it or breathing from up here? Cause in doing so, it can send your body into panic mode, which tenses you up and makes everything harder. Secondly, there's a decent chance you're holding that tension in your forearm. Make sure everything from your fingertips all the way to your shoulder is completely relaxed. Loosen up, take a big breath. You got this brother. One of my favorite soloing hacks is bringing in the sixth interval. Sounds so lovely, right? What I'm doing here is thinking of the highest note as my melody note. And then I'm harmonizing that with the note that is a major sixth or minor sixth below it in the scale. Together. Here's the easiest way to think about this. I'm in the key of C, so I'm gonna think about all of the bar chords that are available to me rooted on the E string. So E minor, F, G, a minor and so on. I take that set of chords and only play the notes that are on the G string and the high E string, I get my sixth interval. You can do the same thing with the bar chords rooted on the A string. So C, D minor, E minor, F, take just the notes on the D and the B string and you get those sixth intervals. You bring these into your solos and it's gonna sound great. All right, so check this out. I got a Black Friday deal going on that's just about to end. When you sign up for my weekly lessons in the Samurai Guitar Dojo, you're not only gonna get in for half off $7.50 a month, but you're also gonna gain access to all of my other courses free with your monthly subscription. I wanted to create a simple, straightforward path to improvement for guitarists who only have 15 to 30 minutes to practice four to five times a week. So every week in the dojo, we do a lesson on a single topic that you should be able to get into your fingers. And the idea is you're gonna quickly start to see those skills stack up. Now I also have full professionally animated courses on a bunch of other topics like theory, soloing, rhythm guitar. And so when you sign up for the dojo using the link in the description, you're gonna get in for half off, you're gonna gain access to the entire back catalog from the dojo as well as all of my other courses. This is something like a $700 value. I've never done a sale like this. Use the link in the description. I hope to see you there. Let me tell you the fastest and easiest way to create a net gain over all of your guitaring. It's taken me 24 years to figure this one out lighten up your touch. See, I've historically been very aggressive with the way that I've played my guitar. But lately I've made an active effort to press down as lightly as possible with my fretting hand and take like 35% off my picking hand. My timing's better, I can play faster, my accuracy's improved, and the lost bit of feel seems to be negligible. <laughs> Thing is, if there is a part where I wanna dig in, play hard and bring that energy, I can always do so, but I find everything works better for me if that's not the default position. All right, this one's pretty gross, but whatever. Sometimes when you've been playing guitar for a while, your fingers get kind of sticky and it makes it hard to move around the strings. But if you're on stage or something and there's no way to wash your hands or clean your strings, there's a way that you can just gut this out. Take your fingers, rub them on your nose and the oils from your nose make it so that it's actually really easy to play for a bit. It's weird, but it works. I've done it, now you can too. A large chunk of tuning issues come from friction on the nut. So if you're bending your strings and it's getting stuck as it moves around in here, you're gonna have problems. Now there's products out there that specifically address this, but the graphite and pencil lead also works as a lubricant. All you gotta do is just kinda draw on the slots here and you've lubed up your nut. Question, how can you make soloing easier for yourself and more enjoyable for an audience? Answer. Repetition. Taking one musical idea and stretching it as far as you can through repetition or slight changes to it is so much easier than coming up with a whole bunch of new musical ideas. And when an audience hears something like this, it gives them something to latch onto, something that they can follow along as you tell your musical story. And of course, there's a time and place to go off in every which direction, but when the ideas aren't flowing, just play the same thing a whole bunch of times and people will love it. So this is something that's been the bane of my guitar existence, but I've recently found a way to fix it. So when I'm doing a lot of string bending, my fingernail kind of gets pulled back from my finger and it's so painful to play after that. For multiple decades, this would happen every couple weeks and I would just suffer my way through it. But my life got so much better when I figured this out. If you take some crazy glue, apply it around the nail and then use a toothpick to make sure it gets under there and then hold it closed for a little bit. When it dries, it completely fixes this problem. One of my worst musical moments was a school talent show. I was playing a song, I stepped on my cable, 
and my guitar came unplugged and everybody laughed. Here's how you avoid being embarrassed like young Sammy G. Take your cable, wrap it around your strap, and then plug it in. So if you step on it, still gonna stay plugged in. There's something you can do. It's not gonna be a whole lot of fun at first, but it's gonna get you a whole lot better on your instrument. Record yourself. You may be thinking, what's wrong with that? Recording sounds fun. But when you first start doing this and listening back to yourself, it's gonna be like a magnifying glass on your problems. Even things that you didn't realize were a problem are gonna become glaring to you. But you gotta do it, and even if you're just doing it with your phone, you gotta lock eyes with your problems to figure out what you need to work on. So say your guitar is tuned up, you put your capo on, and it's no longer in tune. Well, let me show you a hack for this. Instead of reaching for the tuning machines, if your guitar is sharp, then all you gotta do is just give it a bit of a tug down here on this side of the capo, and if it's flat, give it a tug up here on this side. The idea is you're creating more tension when you're pulling here, lowering the pitch, or raising the tension by pulling here, hiring the pitch. And you do this because when you pop the capo off, you're still gonna be in tune. No matter where you're at with your guitar playing, no matter how advanced you are, every now and then you should always go back and try to perfect simple. See, I've gone off in a lot of musical directions and worked on some fairly complicated stuff, but I've always found if I'm not in a place where I can play a simple blues solo perfectly in one take, none of this other stuff is gonna be working. The longer I've spent on my musical journey, the harder I've realized it is to do simple really well. Because improvising a good basic blues solo requires your timing to be bang on. It requires feel, it requires touch, it requires you to formulate and come up with ideas that all work together throughout these 12 bars. That kind of stuff translates into everything I play. So I'd encourage you, whatever kind of music you make, get to the roots of it and make sure you can do that stuff well. Here's how you wrap a cable like a veteran roadie. This is called the over-under technique, and what you do, take one end, put it in your hand, then go over top of the cable, grab it, twist it, make a loop. Now here's the trick. Next time around, you flip your hand over, go under the cable, twist it, make a loop. Back over, under, until you got the whole thing wrapped up. And the idea is, now when you unravel it, no knots. Now you do want to make sure that when you go to unwind things, your cable doesn't go through the loop first. If that happens, you're going to end up with those dreaded knots. But don't worry, there's an easy fix if this does happen. You find your first knot, follow the cable, put your hand through. Find your next knot, follow the cable, hand goes through it, all the way until you reach the end. And when you do that, you grab it, pull all the way through. And look at that. We are again knot free. And that is how you wrap a cable. All right, I'm gonna show you how to play a ukulele in like 20 seconds. You got your simple open campfire chords. When your cable's on the fifth fret, you can play those same shapes. Now imagine the thickest two strings on your guitar fell off. You can still play the bottoms of those shapes. That's how you think about a ukulele. Play this as if you put a capo on the fifth fret of your guitar and the thickest two strings weren't there. The amount of times I've heard about people getting their guitars stolen while out on tour is absolutely heartbreaking. Should this tragedy happen, one of the best ways to up your chances of getting your gear back is by getting some of these Apple AirTags. These little guys are tracking devices you can connect to your phone or your computer. I'd recommend tucking it somewhere discreet so that a thief doesn't just chuck it out. Your ears are your most valuable tool. Protect them, wear earplugs. And I don't love wearing earplugs. I'd be lying to you if I said I did it for every gig that I've played. But one thing I always made sure that I did was put in my earplugs during sound check. Most likely time, some awful high-pitched squeal is gonna come out of someone's amp, or you're gonna be setting something up and the drummer's gonna smash the cymbal right by your ear. This is most likely to happen during sound check. So yeah, you should wear earplugs the entire time, but if you're not going to, at least wear them during sound check. This one's a little bit more advanced, but it's something to think about if you want to add a bit of pizzazz into your guitar solo. When you're playing in this general vicinity on the guitar neck, try replacing any fretted notes with any open strings when possible. So instead of playing something like this where everything's fretted, we're gonna replace this E with the open E string and this B with the open B string, which gives us this. Those open strings ringing out just adds this shimmer. And if you use that in a musical setting. I worked at a guitar store for a number of years and let me tell you the ways that I saw people save money. First of all, if you really want this thing, 
try not to buy the cheap version of it, save up some money, delay that gratification, and go for this. So often I saw people buy the cheap thing, and then they'd end up selling it back to us a little while later so they could get the thing that they actually wanted, losing money in the process. Second of all, don't sell your gear to a guitar store. They need to mark it down because it's used, and they also need to make a profit, so you're seeing a fraction of what you would make selling it on a buy and sell. You can move it quick, sell it for cheaper than market value, and you're still gonna get more than if you sold it to the store. And if you want the best deals, you got to become a bit of an insider. They're regular customers who I genuinely like. They'd come in and you felt like you developed a real relationship with these people. So if a great deal came into the store and I knew one of the guys that I liked would want that, I'd give him a call before it would hit the floor. We couldn't hand out discounts or anything like that, but those types of things would be more likely to happen with the people that you genuinely like. You periodically find people whose latches are all busted on their guitar cases. And if you ask them why, they'll tell you it's because they lost the key and they had no other way of getting in. But I'll let you in on a little secret. It's it's the same key for most guitar cases. So if you lose your key, head into the guitar store, see if you can borrow one. There's no need to be smashing up your latches. This hack has completely changed the way that I practice. This is the Moises.ai app, and what you can do with this is bring in any song and you can either isolate or remove any of the instruments. And so what I'll do is take a recording that I love, remove the guitar part, and then play that guitar part myself over top of it. It's like getting the world's best jam track. It feels like you're playing with your favorite musicians. I've been doing this every day. It's so much fun. If you want to check this out, I got a link in the description. So flying with the guitar is never ideal, but here's what I've done that's helped me avoid any horrific incidents so far. You can get your guitar in the cabin. That's ideal. However, I've only been able to do this when I've had a gig bag. And if you have a gig bag and you can't get in the cabin, that's a recipe for disaster. So what you do is you ask the check-in agent if you can gate check your guitar. And this allows you to take your guitar right to the door of the plane. It's the last thing that gets loaded in and the first thing that gets taken off. I've always been able to do this. I've never been charged more. And you just get that extra little bit of care for your guitar. So you're at rehearsal and your freaking bandmates didn't learn the song again. So everyone's gonna need to listen to it, but you got no way of plugging your phone in. Well, check this out. Do up your song, put it up against your pickup, and you got a makeshift stereo. And last for today, I got a great delay pedal trick. It'll make something that's super simple sound incredibly cool. First, you're gonna wanna set your delay pedal so that it feeds back on the dotted eighth note, which will sound like one E and ah. So what you're gonna do is play a super simple eighth note line like this. But when you kick in the delay, it suddenly sounds so good. What's going on here? If this is your beat, one, two, three, four, and this is the offbeat, one and two, and these two beats are getting delayed by the pedal so that they play on these beats here. So now you're getting one E and a two E and your delay pedal is essentially turning this eighth note rhythm you're playing into a 16th note rhythm. And it sounds amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Those are the hacks that will help you get through existence as a guitar player. Remember, this is the last chance to get that Black Friday deal. If you sign up for my weekly lessons over at the Samurai Guitar Dojo, you're not only gonna get in for half off, but you're also gonna gain access to all of my other courses for only $7.50 a month. You can check that out using the link in the description. Thank you for watching. Until next time, look after yourselves, look after each other, look after the planet. I'm Sam Ray, guitarist, and I'll see you again soon.